I had the potential to own my own place. And I really enjoyed where I was, but it was not my own place. And I think um, some people enjoy being an employee and some people prefer to be um, in charge of their own fate. And I think I was one of those. I wanted to have my own practice. So Dr. Bill Lukens uh, talked to me at a veterinary meeting and I came over to Hillsboro to visit. And I've been here ever since. Well, my town was not a rural community, really. And so when I drove into Hillsboro the first time on Route 50, and the sign, Welcome to Hillsboro, came up. I was first impressed by how pretty and clean it was. And then I came to the center of town, and we had a bank on each corner and a beautiful courthouse. And it seemed like a downtown area where everyone still did everything downtown. My first impression of Hillsboro was a good one, and my impression today is still a good one. Uh, I love this town. Hillsborough's kept up with the times, and yet we're not so close to the city that I'm not out in the country. A pair of glowing eyes looked back at me. Probably a cat, I thought, but it was dark colored and I needed to get closer to see it. I walked around to the other side of the truck, got down on my hands and knees, and held the flashlight on the critter. Trouble, I'd just gone nose to nose with a skunk. One night, we had a terrible thunderstorm, and lightning hit the building, and my computer was toast. I never learned to type, which I think was a crime. So when I had a new word processor on the new computer, I started to play with it. And so I thought, I'll write a story. Before long, I had five stories. I took the brave move of asking my wife to read them, and she actually liked them. I was surprised. So I started with five stories and a lightning storm. I still can't type. Rob took his stories to one of his clients, who was an editor, and his stories became a book. Well, the title, No Dogs in Heaven, question mark, was something that was said to me by a person who was in my office. She and her, her little child came in with a puppy that had been hit by a car. And the puppy was so badly injured that I took it in into the treatment area and before we could even begin treatment the puppy died and so I went back into the exam room with the mother and her child and I said I was sorry there was nothing I could do and the little girl said isn't it wonderful mommy our puppy's the first member of our family in heaven and the mother looked at her and said don't be ridiculous there are no dogs in heaven And I was so surprised by that answer that every minister that came into my office from that point on, I had to ask, do you think there are dogs in heaven? And they all seemed to agree, if it wouldn't be heaven for you, if your dog's not there, then your dog will be waiting for you. Mrs. Murphy came alongside in her car. I was pulling out of my driveway and found this poor turtle in the road. Can you see if you can help me? In the cardboard box she held out to me was a large male box turtle. His shell had cracks radiating out from a hole in the center. The missing circular area was about three inches in diameter and exposed the naked turtle underneath. She was upset and worried that he might die. How could I possibly tell her that I knew nothing about turtles? especially squash turtles. He really does have a bad crack in his shell. Maybe we could wire the cracks so that they might heal, but I'm not sure what to do about that big hole. All of a sudden it occurred to me that I had a great deal of experience with this type of problem. I was the Bondo King of West Main Street. I mixed up the fiberglass body putty, filled her in. I even drew a pattern in the brown putty to make it match the other parts of the shell. It hardened like a rock. One evening in August, I saw Mrs. Murphy pull into the office parking lot. She came in carrying a cardboard box. He was back. The turtle's patch was eight years old now and faded to a light tan color, but it was as tight as the day the bondo had been smeared into his wound. I'm going to put him back in his woods where he belongs. 
I haven't seen him again since that day, but I never pass a turtle on the road that I don't slow down and look at his shell. Turtles live a long time. Please be careful. Well, I'm surprised at how many people read the book. And so I think a lot of people have sent copies of the book to their relatives and have told them, this is my vet. And I always think that that's funny because I get letters from clients' relatives saying, I read your book and I loved it. It's expanded the number of people who I've met because of the book. In Hillsboro, I'm still just Rob Sharp, their dog vet. But living in Hillsboro has changed my life because I've found a home. I'm thrilled that my son also enjoys it and that my daughter works in the practice with us. She's an animal person and has never met an animal too beat up or too scruffy looking that she didn't think it was cute and always has been. My son's in veterinary school now and will graduate in the 100th year of this practice and is probably coming to Hillsboro. But I also hope that for quite a while I get to practice with him because we do have fun together. And then I can go off and fish into the sunset. Each day I see clients who are not only clients, they're friends. And I think that's something that you don't often get in the big city. I can go through an afternoon and see 20 people and sometimes 15 or 16 of them will be people I've seen for literally generations. I have clients whose parents and even grandparents have been clients of mine. So Hillsboro is a home, a great place to practice, good place to raise kids, good place for your kids to come back. Of course we get attached to our pets. If we didn't love them, we wouldn't have them. And when this old cat dies, a period of mourning will follow. A burial ritual, tears and grief, then a kitten will unexpectedly appear out of nowhere and with Velcro paws attach itself to us and create a new distraction. We never can replace a pet we've lost, but we can add another friend. Different in many ways, yet in some ways the same. Our vow to never have another is forgotten.